Hello mortals, it's your favorite Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and welcome to this episode of Vanilla Flavors. You see, when I'm not dying for your sins, there's only one class I play in classic World of Warcraft, and that's a priest. Priests are the best healers in the game, but that doesn't mean they don't have some secrets up their sleeve as well, my children. So let's see what these preachers of our Lord can really bring to the table. Before we start our leveling adventure, we're going to need to pick a race. So what's unique about Classic WoW is that priests have spells tied to specific races. And it's true that yes, some races are better than others, but look, just let's not take that out of context, okay? Night Elves are probably the weakest priests. They get Star Shards, which is quite useful for leveling, but other than that, it doesn't find much use. Elune's Grace is another ability that reduces damage and increases dodge chance, which can find some use against melee and PvP. Humans are pretty good priests. They get Desperate Prayer, which is a fat self-heal that costs no mana, but has a long cooldown. Human priests also get Feedback, which can find some use against casters in PvP, but it isn't amazing in any sense. Humans also get 5% more spirit, which is something a priest will always appreciate in any scenario. Now, dwarfs are arguably the best race to play a priest on Alliance site. Dwarf priests get Desperate Prayer like a human, but they also get Fear Ward, which is a ludicrously good spell in PvP and PvE. Raid groups will specifically hunt out dwarf priests for their raids because having Fear Ward on critical members of your party like tanks and heals is an amazing advantage. Oi! Pull it the fucking gather, laddie! <laughs> Dwarf also gets Stone Form, which is a super strong ability to have in PvP because you can use it to counter physical damage, rogue poisons, and hunter viper stings. So in PvE, Dwarf is the best. I mean, their racials are just far too strong to pass up. There is some debate that humans can be better because 5% spirit increase can be useful in any situation, but in PvP, Dwarf is the best. There's absolutely no contest there. Their uh, racials are just far too strong to pass up. So undead priests get Devouring Plague, which is a shadow damage disease that heals you, and it's something that a shadow priest will love. They also get Touch of Weakness, which is pretty meh for PvP. But they do get Will of the Forsaken, which is probably the best racial in the game in both contexts. Trolls get Berserking, which is fantastic for PvE. Hex of Weakness is one of the few spells that can reduce healing on a target, so it's fantastic for PvP. And they also get Shadow Guard, which is basically just a lightning shield. If you plan on playing Shadow in PvP, I highly recommend getting the Black Hat talent because it can proc off Shadow Guard. So it can stun melee classes that are just absolutely wailing on you, and you can escape. Honestly, on Horde, both races are pretty good in PvE and PvP. Pick what you want here. And that goes for all the priests, in fact. At the end of the day, I'd suggest playing what you think is prettiest. Just because you're a Night Elf Priest doesn't mean that nobody's going to invite you to the raid. A priest is a priest, and you will always be appreciated, no matter what shape, size, or color you really are. Unless you play a female dwarf. I mean, just... Oh! Oh my... Oh my god, who would cho who would choose to- you know what dude, I'm- I'm done man, I'm not doing this shit anymore, like- Oh my god, why would you do that? Leveling a priest is surprisingly easy. The hardest levels are gonna be around 1 to 8, where you'll have to smite spam your way to victory. Once you get a wand is when everything changes. What makes a priest so efficient at leveling is their ability to conserve mana while still killing mobs quickly. It's critical to get the wand specialization and the spirit tap talents as soon as possible to be efficient. Your basic rotation is going to be you shielding yourself, throwing on a shadow word pain on the target, and wanding the devil out of that son of a bitch. I'm going to wand you to death! I see them blue! Oh my god! Around level 26 is when you'll get mind flay, and you can add that to the start of your pulls. And in later levels, you can get Shadow Form, and it's smooth sailing from there. If you follow this sort of rotation, you'll rarely have to drink unless it's accidentally a big pull, or it's a very chunky mob. It's important to hoard as much spirit as possible. More spirit equals faster mana regen, which equals faster pulls, which in the end equals faster level 60. 
If you're wondering if you can still heal dungeons, the answer is yes. I mean, come on, dude. You're playing a priest. Priests are arguably the best healers in the game. Shamans have great AoE, Paladins have great single target, but Priests have both, and that's what makes them so good, their flexibility. Because of the wide toolkit Priests have, that means that they have a pretty high skill ceiling. Downranking spells appropriately, using power and shield in preparation for big bursts of damage, and managing your threat effectively are what separates good Priests from the bad ones. So there is another spec that you can get that goes into the deep disc tree, and the spell you're looking to get here is Power Infusion. This can boost caster DPS significantly, so mages will be begging at your feet to throw this on them. <laughs> you won't do as much healing with this spec, but it can provide some utility with Power Infusion to help DPS the boss. Shadow Priests are an interesting tale. They don't do that much damage, but they do bring utility with things like Dispel, Vampiric Embrace, and Power Word Shield, and Fear Word if you are a dwarf. Now the main reason why you'd bring a Shadow Priest to your raid is the 15% Shadow Damage debuff they can put on the boss. This can boost the Warlock DPS in your raid, so the more Warlocks in your raid, the more useful a Shadow Priest is. This is why you're here, to make sure Shadow Weave is on the boss. Your biggest struggle in PvE is going to be having enough mana to last the fight. Be sure to bring consumables so you can continue to pump out DPS throughout the fight. So please note that we're not sure yet if Classic WoW is launching with 8 debuff slots on a target or 16. If it is 8, this will ruin Shadow Priest viability in raids. My guess is that they'll do the same as they do on private servers and up the cap to 16 at a later date. But then we'll see. I'll give you guys an update in the comments in this video when we do find out an answer. Shadow Priests are a threat to be reckoned with in PvP, as you can see. They are known as the Face Melters. The combination of all their dots plus Mind Flay and Mind Blast can destroy an enemy's very existence. What makes them so good is the high damage output and self-healing your spells provide. Playing an undead Shadow Priest and having Devouring Plague can make you seem even more terrifying. In group PvP scenarios, Shadow Priests aren't as strong because of the mana issues they still have, but they're still nothing to scoff at. Healing priests are what you'd expect in PvP. They stand in the back and they heal. And you can get away with using your PvE spec to heal for the most part. So you'll be using the same toolkit you use in a player versus environment scenario, but with more of a focus on spells like Powered Shield, Psychic Scream, Mana Burn, and Renew, as well as your traditional healing spells. Some notable talents you may want to pick up though is Spirit Redemption so you can heal your friends after you die, or you could also grab Power Infusion and support a major Warlock buddy. So if you plan on healing, I strongly recommend picking up Tailoring and leveling it up on your Adventure to 60. The reason for this is to get the True Faith Vestments. You can find a recipe for this robe in Strat Live. The True Faith Vestments are equivalent to Tier 2, so you'll be wearing it for a very long time before you find an upgrade in AQ. Once you finally craft the robe, I'd suggest picking up enchanting, or just ditching tailoring altogether and picking up alchemy. Of course, like all my other videos, you should pick up engineering if you're serious about PvP. Even though you're a priest, don't skip out on first aid. If you have enough cloth to level up your first aid, I strongly recommend doing so. This can find some use in group scenarios because you might be out of mana, but you still might need to heal yourself. This is where bandages can be used, and it can save your skin in a couple of scenarios. Okay, so you've hit 60, you respec and you're a healer now, and then suddenly the realization hits you. Oh god, how do I make money as a healer? And the obvious answer for that is professions. Most healers lean towards alchemy and herbalism, but secondary professions like fishing or cooking is good as well. But holy priests have a unique opportunity to farm lashers in DM East. It's a requirement that you pick up the Holy Nova talent and have some decent gear, but it's a great way to make 50 to 100 gold in an hour and be independent while doing so. You can also group up with a tank and both of you guys can kill certain bosses in the dungeon and mine ore you find at the end. Ideally, you'd be an enchanter and you can disenchant the gear that drops off the bosses and split the rewards with your tank. The money is great, but what's even better is the friendships that you can make along the way. 
Now, you can't talk about a priest without talking about Benediction. This staff is a priest-specific weapon that you get from an item in Molten Core. Through a quest chain that ends in a special scenario to prove your healing skills, you'll be granted with the weapon. Now you see, Benediction is practically a priest's appendage. It is your manhood. It has specific stats tailored to making you an amazing healer. What's even better is that the staff can be transformed into Anathema, which is a black version that is just as good for Shadow Priests. Did you guys get get it? This was a this was a penis joke. Do you do you get it? So let's have some real talk. The only reason why you'd play a priest is mind control. Mind control is the best trolling spell in all of WoW. You can mind control other players and throw them off cliffs. You can throw them off the boat at Booty Bay. You can throw them off a zeppelin. You can mind control an enemy NPC and have them kill the opposite faction. Mind control finds a lot of use in dungeons because you can mind control elite mobs and you can give your friends buffs, or you can do crazy amounts of damage with them. Like, I could literally go on forever about how you could mind control a certain mob in certain dungeons and just basically break the game. In short, mind control is amazing. So that's the priest. I'd suggest this class for anyone looking to be the best at healing your fellow disciples, melting the faces of sinners in PvP, and being a preacher that everyone will love. Farewell, my children. Jesus out. Hi there, thank you so much for watching my video. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I hope you guys understand how much effort I do really put in these videos, and I do try and get them out as fast as I can. Please let me know what class you want me to review next, and yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye! <coughs> Alright, let me just log in real quick and I can get some footage. Uh, oh. oh my god. Oh my god, I have the best idea ever. You lose me, then you'll be left alone, oh baby, telephone, and tell me I'm your own.